Welcome to another week. This week it's looking like it's going to be quite unsettled weather. There's predictions for rain for most days. Um, today is Tuesday and this is about the last rain-free day I can expect for a while. So I've been out and about working on the garden. I've got lawns to mow. But whilst it is relatively sunny and warm, uh, I've also got one or two plants on the property that are starting to come out and look quite spectacular. They're not all to my taste. Some of them I inherited um, and some I have planted, but I thought I'd give you a quick show whilst they're looking relatively nice in the relatively bright weather before it all starts to go downhill later in the week. got them this time. There they go. The baby plovers. <laughs> Worth the wait. <laughs> Welcome to Saturday. Got a little bit of a bitty sort of a day today all kinds of little jobs that I want to get through. Um, it's currently sort of overcast with a little bit of blue sky but thunderstorms and rain are predicted later. That's a bit par for the course for this time of year. There were thunderstorms last night. So I've got a few things that I want to do that are kind of undercover. I'm in my potting shed at the moment. Um, so let's have a quick look at some of the things. I was given this lovely old uh, toolbox and I uh, can't get enough of them. I already own two, but there's plenty of things that I could put in here. So I want to give this a bit of a, a renovation. Then I've got stuff I can put away inside of it. Um, there's some work I want to do on sharpening the chainsaws. I've got this new file, um, I'll show you why. You may recall in a previous video I was talking about this Timberline chain sharpening tool which we've been using very successfully on the Husqvarna, um, this chainsaw here. But then a while ago we got this Ryobi electric chainsaw which is 
mercy basically my chainsaw will's chainsaw <laughs> not quite like that but will likes using this too i just can't use that i can't even start it um but ever since i've been sharpening this using this tool here um it has broken i don't know how well you can see inside but the the little tooth dangling down on the right there is worn off and the little tooth dangling down on the left is not that far behind it that's the um this silver metal thing here and that keeps the um chainsaw bit that you're trying to sharpen in place gives it grip so without this little dangling down bit here um, which you can see the one behind it is now lacking and there's nothing to keep the chain in place it just slides around all over the place rendering this tool useless um, now I did recommend this because I really enjoyed using it on the Husqvarna so as far as I can tell there are two possibilities either it's just not compatible with the right AB in which case it's not this product's fault or it's been set up incorrectly for the right AB, as in it's been set at the wrong angle. In which case it's not this product's fault. Or it could just be this happens to this product over time. We've had this for several years now and it might just be normal wear and tear. Anyway, whatever the reason, we're going to experiment with the old-fashioned way. <laughs> So we bought this file, which is the right size for the Ryobi chain, we already have one for the Husqvarna. So we're going to experiment using this traditional way of sharpening a chain, that's why I've got my computer out, you might have noticed. Um, YouTube is excellent for all sorts of uh, tutorials and learning all sorts of things, so we're going to have a stab at that, following along with a YouTube tutorial. <laughs> um, you may recall also that my um, cold frame broke. I'll just quickly show you. And I had patched the crack in the perspex with um, duct tape, but we bought this clear all-weather tape to replace it. So we'll see how that goes. That's just vanity, really. <laughs> I I did I did um about buying it. It was like twenty two dollars. It wasn't cheap. Only about um, eleven pounds, twelve pounds. But I just I was so proud of the cold frame. I was I didn't like the duct tape look. Not that this is much better, but it's a bit better. Um, and yeah, I was just vanity and pride. I wanted it to look at its best. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and then there's something else I want to do a bit later using this metal cutting tool for the uh, jigsaw and I'll talk about that when I get to it. That all went very well, the tutorial was helpful and Will's expertise was helpful so I've sharpened the Ryobi and we've come up with a plan for a sharpening setup that will make it easier to do one person um, because the chains will sort of wobble around and the chains move about, so currently without a, an appropriate vice, which we didn't need with the timber line, it is trickier to do it with the file on your own. Basically, the only way to get around it is to sit on the chainsaw. Um, but we've come up with an idea, a simple solution that I'll show you once we've built it. And um, so, yes, that was all very successful. Onwards to the next thing. Later on in the morning, we finally embarked on what was said to be my main project for the day. I'm taking some of this metal that we had on the property. I'm not sure what it's for originally. It looks like the kind of stuff that goes into concrete, but I don't think it is quite. Um, and I'm cutting it up with the metal cutting blade on the jigsaw, and I'm making little plant guards. I found that the sticks are relatively effective in some circumstances but not effective in all circumstances and there are some plants I have that come up every year like the hardy geraniums that I would like to afford better protection early on 
whilst they're still small and vulnerable. And the benefit of this system is that once I've made the guards, I've got them for as long as I need them, essentially forever. And I'll be able to slip them over the plants whilst they're young and tender, and then whip them off when they're big enough to stand on their own two feet, put these aside and then whip them out again next year. So I've just started, I've uh, made two, well the basis of two, and I'm just going to roll them and clip them, and on with the rest. And I've got another sheet of this metal, should I want it, uh, to do the same. There we go. I've got eight of these smaller ones, which are mostly things like my hardy geraniums and some of the more fancy aquilegias I bought until they're established. And I used the rest of it to make these two larger ones, which I'm going to put around a couple of the trees. The sky's starting to darken. Thunderstorms are predicted for later. You know that sort of sticky, humid, unpleasant sort of air? Well, that's what we're getting now. So, good time to get on with this. I haven't shown you these yet. I picked them up a couple of days ago. I got an alert to say they're back in stock. So I bought two of them. You may remember when I was back in the UK in May, June, I was very impressed by my parents' garden and they have this beautiful double hardy geranium. I don't know if it's this one. I think I took a photo. If I did, I'll insert it so you can see. Anyway, this is a very similar flower. I just love hardy geraniums. So I've got two. To double the chances of success primarily, but also I do have a place in the garden for both of these. So one's going in my geranium bed and one's going in my current main flower bed. And then obviously down the line I'll experiment with taking cuttings and getting more of them for my donut bed. But for the time being, now I've got my new cages, I'm going to go and plant these fellas out. Before it potentially starts pouring down. Can you hear that? Well, before I get struck by lightning. <laughs> Here's five of my cages on my hardy geranium bed. This is the new one, the double. That's Roxanne, which is like awesome. I really, really recommend that plant. One of my older ones as well from last year, and these two also new ones from this year. So I'm very pleased with that. If I stand back, it's actually quite discreet. In my flower bed, here's the other hardy geranium. I, this one is prefers a uh, slightly shady spot, so that's why I've chosen to plant them where I've planted them. This is underneath my rosemary. And then I've put the other two smaller cages around my newer uh, acrylegias. So this pinkier one, which I showed you before. And that one over there, which has a yellow flower or at least it would. What prompted this was I noticed that something had come along and bitten the flowers off of that one. I think it's a bower bird. They do like things that are yellow and they have attacked yellow flowers before. The thing that annoys me about that is that I was hoping obviously to collect the seed off of it. So I hope it will flower again. I think I can see one more flower starting to develop. Hopefully this cage will protect it a bit from the bower birds so there's a flower and I can scatter the seed. I put another one around the lemon that got um, destroyed by something. I thought it was a wallaby, I'm not so sure now. I don't know what did it but as you can see it's still looking pretty awful. I don't know how long it'll take for it to recuperate but I'll give it an, another wee while maybe till sort of autumn and if it doesn't do anything by then I think I will write that off and get another one 
because this is quite an interesting sound, sounding lemon. Um, you can apparently eat the fruit, it's relatively sweet or at least less sour. Um, not that I dislike lemons at all, I like the refreshingness of lemons. I often add lemon to my smoothies. Anyway, that sounded interesting. <laughs> and then finally, you won't really be able to see it. I'm quite liking these cages, they are pretty discreet. I put one there around the flowering dogwood. So now only one of these trees has still got the original bubble wrapping and that's the tree that may or may not be a dud. Remains to be seen. Time to beat a hasty retreat anyway. I'm very pleased with that. I might get some more of that mesh. I didn't know where it came from. It was already here. But using, as I say, using the blade on the um, jigsaw, it was very easy to cut it up and make these. Oh, here comes the rain. <laughs> See you later. There was one other thing I wanted to show you before I go, actually. That's these new doorknobs on our kitchen larder door. I'm having to use a torch. It's really raining now. <laughs> it's very gloomy. But uh, I hope you can see them. They've got little parrots on them. We're very pleased with those. I'm actually not sure how much footage I've got now, so <laughs> I will either see you tomorrow or I will see you next week. Either way, bye for now.